and 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, over the livestock, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So the, so God created man in his own image in the image of God created. He, him male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to every thing that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so, so just coming back up here, there's just a couple of things I want to highlight. Not everything. Okay. We, 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 we can't do everything. Um, if you have a question, you can, you can pause and, and ask, pause me and ask the question. I just want to highlight here. There is this, this, uh, exhortation among the Trinity to make man and the, this, the, the image, the way in which God is going to make man is in our image after our likeness. And so these are, these are clarifying ideas. The big idea is that in, in the likeness of God, similar to God. Okay. Just like God. Okay. He's not God, but he's made in God's image. Okay. And this is, this is physical. There's, there's, uh, there's likeness there. There's image. So this is, we could say similar to God. And if we did an anthropology course, we can go into all those different things of what, of what it symbolized. Okay. And then, so there is this making of, of, of man. And then there is this fundamental activity of what man is going to do. So God's going to make, God's going to make man. So this is the act of God. And then the act that God bestows. So this is the ordained part, right? Dominion. Now here's a question. What does dominion? What's another word for dominion? Rule. Rule, subdue, or we could say reign. This idea of having leadership. We, so we could speak of this. This, is, this could be kingship or uh, leadership. But it's still in the context, right? It's under the context of God, right? And so this is where we also see like a, a, like a stewardship, a stewardship of creation. So he's responsible to God. Or we could also then talk about headship, right? So, so man is placed over creation. And so this is, this is uh, over all the earth. So this is a headship over, over creation. Okay, is everyone tracking there with me? There's this fundamental idea of, of lordship, lordship over creation, right? And so that's what man is doing, correct? This is the response, excellent observation. This is the responsibility of man, okay? And so in many ways, this is resembling then, of course, God over creation, okay? But it's not without, so the stewardship is the idea of, He's, he's still under the, the lordship of God, the father, right? And then down here, we have specific commands that man is to carry out. He's to be fruitful. He's to multiply. He's to fill the earth. He's to subdue it. And he's to have dominion. So when we think about this subdue, let's, what, is this, what does this idea convey? What do you think when you think subdue? I like the word control, Henry. Control. And so if you're subduing your garden, right, you're subduing your garden, there, there, there is this idea of, of care. And so there is also this idea of protection, right? So correct. So there's this control, care, protection. Think about this for a second. In the fall, was Adam subduing and having dominion over creation? In the fall, we're look, looking forward. No, right? Oh. The serpent was a created animal. 
or we could say a creature. Adam did not exercise the command that he was given. Neither did Eve. In this context, it's the, the, the subduing, it's Adam and Eve, right? But, but looking at their relationship, Adam has the headship, okay? But neither one of them exercised this control or this uh, subduing, right? Uh, any comments or questions? That's all I'm going to say. There's much more we could say. Any other comments or questions? Is that making sense? Okay, let's 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 move on here. Then we go down to Genesis two verses uh, fifteen to seventeen. The Lord God took man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it. So there's that care idea that Henry brought up, and then this keep idea. And so this keep idea is actually the word is like guard. Right, so um, Adam is to is to be a steward over God's creation, and then he's also given commands here. Right, there's this, there's these uh, several commands. You can surely eat of every tree of the garden. You shall not eat, and on the day that you eat, you will you will die, or there's there's death. Okay. Now, and, and this is where we don't reinterpret the rest of Scripture in view of Genesis 1 and 2 and 3. We let Scripture clarify what's going on here. Okay, is everyone tracking there with me? We don't, uh, this, is, this, is, this is given in, in principial fundamental form. But we don't reinterpret the rest of scripture based upon our exegesis here because it's not as clear. And so this is one of the truths that the, the, the historic theology has taught us. The unclear is interpreted by the clear, okay? And so the question is, is, is this death just individual or corporate? Corporate. It's corporate, right? Everyone dies. Animals die. Death is extended far beyond the individual himself, right? And so this, this, this die signifies not just for Adam, but also for uh, the, the creation under his care, okay? Everyone's tracking there with me, and we're gonna we're gonna come cycle back to this in uh, in Genesis now. As we so so let's let's move on now to to Genesis three fourteen to to nineteen. Okay, so let's read read the text and then we'll discuss it. So this is after the fall. Adam was passive. Eve took the fruit. It was pleasing to the eyes. It, he, she was, it was, she was desiring to make herself wise. It was good for food. So there is this, this pride of life, the desire for the eyes. And then also that it's, there's That's a desire the to eat it. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a desire to eat it. Right. So there's, let, let's just, where is that passage at? Um, here we go. Um, this is the reference here. The woman saw the tree was good for food. It was so it, it was not only good for food, it, it was a it was beautiful to look at. It was beautiful to look at. And it and it was desired to make one wise. So there's three things here in the fall. She took and she ate and she gave to her husband and he ate. And so he does not, he is being controlled. He's passive. He's he is not subduing. He's being controlled. Eve is not subduing and dominating. Uh, not not in a bad way. I'm not saying dominating in a bad manner. Dominating in a good way. Lord, exercising lordship, okay. Uh, and so then they fall, okay. And so look, look at the curse that that uh, is given. Again, we're not going to go into all the different curses. We're just looking at several things here. Verse 15, the uh, verse 14. There's a cursing of the serpent himself. Uh, um, itself. He's on the belly. He's no longer walking. Verse 15. Uh, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between her offspring and your offspring. And so here, this is clearly moving beyond physical 
too spiritual. And and my interpretation, no, no doubt, I, I, you know, people would would not would not agree with me in more liberal circles. But I would say that it was most likely um, Satan uh, possessed probably the serpent. He probably went into the the serpent and and corrupted the serpent. And so this is now dealing with spiritual seed, right? And so now this is beyond physical, okay? This is the spiritual seed both of, of Satan and Christ, okay? So much exegetical work we can do for another time. We, we, um, we don't have the time tonight because there's, there's, Christology is, 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 is so deep. And so the promise, though, is that the serpent will, um, will bruise the heel of, of Christ, but Christ will bruise the head. So he, so this is, we could refer to the, the offspring. This is Christ. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. We'll look at that tonight. And so this head is the death of Satan and his work. Okay. The big idea is the undoing of death, right? Okay. That's, that's the big idea. And of course that includes the work of Satan and his work. And Satan's work is through the law, which is what Romans teaches us, all right? And so, but, but undoing the curse of death is the big idea here. And this is the, the proto-evangelium. This is the, the, the first proclamation of the gospel. And so from here moving forward, and we're, we're going to get to it tonight. Okay. So, so just bear with me. Okay. Um, there's two offsprings, the offspring of Christ, the offspring of, of, of Satan. Okay. And then come, we're not going to look at the curse of, of, of Eve. Look at the curse of Adam. So because of, of, the, of the curse of Adam, look at this, the ground is cursed. So this is uh, creation. It's beyond Adam. This is also creation beyond. And then there's this curse of, of death. Both in creation and humanity. Now, what is the extent to this? That's where we're going to go now. <laughs> okay. So there's much more that could be said so much more. And, and the questions are really gearing us towards thinking about these things. But at the end of the day, we have to look at how the scripture has interpreted and giving us not a reinterpretation, but the full and true meaning. Okay. So let's now turn in your Bibles to Romans 5, 12 to 17. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the coming one, the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. The free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign. They will reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So fundamental to the, our understanding of the gospel and also concerning the, the understanding of, of who Christ is and what we have 
gained in him. So let's go back to the text now. Here we identified this, this reason. Okay. And this reason is giving us a, um, a, a reason or uh, that's connecting back with the, the preceding context of five, one to 11. And the specific question that we're answer, we're, we're, that, that's being addressed, let's read the text first. For while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. How much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved in his life? More than that, we rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have received reconciliation. How can God reconcile and save us through one man? That's the question that's being asked. And so that's why we wrote here. The question that's being asked that Paul is going to answer is how can God reconcile a people through Christ's death, right? The death of one. And so the, the short answer is going to be federal headship or representative headship. Okay. Is everyone tracking there with me? That's the issue that's going to be addressed. How can it be right? So we just accept on face value, Christ died, we're saved. But the question remains, how can God do that? Right? How can God save a people? Right? How can God save a people through the death of one? Okay. Everyone's tracking there with me. And so the, the verses 12 to 17 is going, Paul is going to answer that question. Okay. And so let's just look carefully at what's being said here. So looking here, uh, we have a, we have a comparison just as sin entered the world through one man and death entered through sin in this way, death spread to all mankind in Adam, all mankind sin. And so obviously maybe you notice that, 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 uh, 15 E you're like, man, that's not, I don't remember seeing that 15 E. I don't remember seeing that when you read. And so let's look at that for a second. Okay. But what we can say here is comparison, or maybe we could say, um, yeah, this is a comparison and it's going to be comparing to something below. Okay. And so what's being compared. So what we can first say is that sin entered, sin entered the world. And look at this through one man. So this is the means by which sin entered. And, and the text really highlights this one, one, one man. Okay. And so in one sense, sin is entering, it's doing the action, but in another sense, obviously man is ultimately what, when we were speaking of actual meaning, we would say man sinned and brought it into the world. Okay. Everyone tracking there with me. So this is just, a, this is a, this is a paraphrase here. Thinking about this, then sin, the mention of sin automatically brings up the idea of the law, law or God's commandment. Okay. Man broke it. All right. Now look at this here. So then there's a progression here. So not only does sin enter the world through one man, there is also this death that now enters the world through sin. So this is the means by which death enters. Okay. Man is, man is the cause. Okay. And, but it's not generic, right? We know from Genesis three, that this man from Genesis three, this man is none other than Adam. And they pop back and forth. And, and so um, we could speak of Adam and man. Adam is, is Hebrew, which means man. So there's a play on words here. Okay. So when you see, even though there's Adam later mentioned, and then there's also man, these words mean the same thing. So then now we have this progression. So there's a progression here. And so look at this in this way, death. So this is one of the most fundamental texts in all the scripture. Okay. Let's, let's, let's highlight this. I, I want everyone to focus here. Okay. This is so debated that most of the translations have a different way of saying it. 
Um, I strongly disagree. I'm going to try to prove it tonight. And it's not coming from me. It's coming from also many, many people, but I, I hope that you'll see it uh, tonight. This is the manner. This is the manner. The manner by which death spread to all mankind. Death spread to all mankind. And the question is, in what manner? Is everyone tracking? So this is the object. So we have, so if you can imagine here, you have, let's just write this down. You have man, sin, death, death to all mankind. Everyone sees, everyone sees the, the clear chain, right? Man, sin, death, all mankind. Now watch this. Now, the question is, how is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? Now, many translations translate this this way. They will say, because, because all sinned. The implication being that each person sinned and brought death. Does everyone see, does everyone see how that translation works? Um, each man sins. That's one interpretation. Okay. Th the difficulty here is this. Okay. So let's, we're going to do a little bit of study in the original language here. Just, just, just a teeny bit here coming down here. Th there's these two words. It's kind of hard to, 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 I'm going to give, um, uh, if, if you look at the bottom of the screen on the left here, okay. You can see this, this one word is a P F a P which it's a preposition. It means upon over in, uh, uh, at the time at two, the ESV translates it because, okay. So that's really interesting. There's, there's preposition and there's conjunctions for because, and, and so we have to say like, what, you know, that's not an option in the lexicon. And then there's this other word. It's a relative pronoun who, which, what, who, which, what. Okay. So literally we could write here, uh, in whom, uh, or on whom obviously in is the best option there. Okay. So in whom lit, liter, literally in whom. Okay. Um, and so if we say in whom all mankind sinned, I, I really, I, I'm really against translating it, uh, because, okay. It should not be translated because, because there's, there's other words that could be used, but if we see in whom, who's the whom, Who's the whom by which all mankind sinned? Who is the whom? Adam. Adam, the context, Diva. In Adam. whom all mankind sinned. And uh, mankind is, is, I'm adding that there. But I'm in, so, so literally the reading. So I'm going to write down the literal translation. Uh, in whom all sinned. Literal. This is literal. Literal translation. Greek to English, in, in whom all sin. So we ask, this is a statement here. This is an action, right? So this is a, a this is then a, a, a progression as well. So sin entered the world through man, one man, death through sin. In this way, death spread to all mankind. In Adam, all sinned. And so what's going on here is Paul, uh, Paul is saying that it, that Adam was a representative. And so that when he fell, all of us fell with him. As our representative, we are all, we, we received his guilt. In Adam, so in the sphere of Adam, all of mankind sinned. So all of mankind receives the guilt. Okay? And you're going to say, Tim, how is it the case that all of mankind sinned? Do all of us experience the curse of death? Does anyone know here of a, of a, of a child? Anyone know here of a child that when he's born, when, when he or she's born, they have immortal life. They're not dead, <laughs> right? No, right? Death, death is, is for all of us, right? And so I'm really against the interpretation that the way that death spread to all of mankind is because all of us sinned. Th that's such a bad translation. 
because that doesn't sure get at it. Uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Does it connect with uh with genetically uh, terms when we inherit uh, some traits of Adam genetically? Yeah. So let's write down. Yeah. So let's write down. Let's write down um, three some three three ideas here that I think are being spelled out. Um, John Calvin referred to them. I think it's good. So so this refers to number one, um, sin. Number two, the guilt of sin, and number three, the nature. So in Adam's physical sin, we all sinned, okay? And so if you're saying, Tim, how can that be? As a representative is one way to look at it. But then there's that guilt, not just the sin act, but the guilt, the condemnation. And we're going to prove all of this in the succeeding context. Because the question is, where does the context go? Does it, does it go on to say how everyone sinned and this and that? No, the, the context is going to go on to explain how uh, Adam brought condemnation. And then all of that comparison, just as, is going to be compared to the life we have in Christ. So this is so fundamental, okay? And so then we can also speak of that nature component, that, that um, when we are born, we have the sin nature. So this is the sin nature here, okay? Great question, Mark. Any other questions or comments? Is everyone tracking where we're at? Ask a question, make a comment. Any, everyone tracking where we're at right That's now? That's our team. Yeah. That's our team. Is this rightly uh, uh, to say that the guilt or sin of Adam just imputed to, to us? Yes, we'll get there, but, but let's go ahead and write this down right now. Ex excellent thing. So when we talk about specifically the, 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 the guilt is imputed. And so I looked up that word imputed. Imputed is literally an accounting term for like credit credit or we could say debit if it's positive or negative right it's 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 credited to our account credited to the account depending on how you look at it excellent question pastor cloyd's question is so fundamental because then if if our guilt is imputed to us if, if adam's guilt is imputed it's credited to us then the blessing is that christ's righteousness is imputed to us as well <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So this is why it's so fundamental. It works. It cuts both ways. And so when people don't want to see federal headship, they don't realize that they're cutting themselves off at the legs. <laughs> let's move on here. Yeah, everyone's tracking here. Okay, so let's go on to verse number uh, 513, 513a, okay? So we have here a... a explanatory conjunction here and look at what he says okay we have a time reference before the law so this is time before before there was and so the law here this is referring to to the law of moses before the law sin was in the world That's the reality. So there's, there's something much bigger going on here than just the Mosaic law. If we just look at Old and New Testaments from a relationship of, of old law, new law, Mosaic law, new covenant, we miss that broader picture. And so that's why, and so that's why, you know, obviously this is debated. Maybe you don't receive it. So that's why we have the, the old covenant, new covenant, but these are parts of a bigger prick Pick picture that go back to to Genesis three, fifteen for the covenant of grace, a picture beyond, beyond. Okay, and so this is old covenant, new covenant. Okay, and so let's look at this here. So before there. Before the law, sin was in the world. Everyone agrees with that, right? Sin first ha happened in, in, um, in Adam, okay? But look at this. Sin, and this is a true statement. Sin cannot be credited, cannot be, in, so sin cannot be imputed or credited if there's a condition here. What's the condition? This is the condition. If there is no law. So Paul is expanding our understanding of God's law, of God's requirement of what has been done in the Christ 
beyond the Mosaic law, beyond Mosaic new covenant. Is everyone tracking there with what's going on here? We're, we're, we're going to get to that proof in a second. Okay. So um, death ruled, but death ruled from Adam until Moses. So remember, where, where there's sin, where there's death, we can understand that there's law behind it. Because death signifies the, the punishment of law. Sin represents the, the breaking of law. Is everyone tracking there? So he's expanding how from the beginning of time, from, from Adam until the present, just as, just as Adam his guilt was imputed to all of his prospect, uh, uh, posterity, all of his seed. So with Christ, all of his seed, his work will be credited, and it's beyond the Jews. Everyone see that? It's beyond the Jews. Because wherever there's sin, <laughs> wherever, there's, wherever there's death, if, if, if Christ's solution undoes sin, undoes death, his presence is there also. Let's take a pause. Everyone's there with me. Everyone's there so far. So look at this. Death ruled. So, so death is ruling or dominating, right? So this, this comes back to dominion, right? Adam's off the scene. Adam is not ruling, right? Death, the curse is, the curse of death is ruling. Whereas in creation, Adam was created to, to, to have dominion over the creation. He sins, he falls, he's out. And then what rules and reigns now is the effects of him breaking his agreement, his, the covenant that God uh, gave him. Look at this. Death ruled from Adam to Moses, even concerning the ones who are not sinning in the likeness of Adam. So what is this meaning here? <laughs> Even concerning all other sins. Do you see that? So someone would say, oh, it's just concerning the sins of Adam, disobedience. That's it, right? So this is much more than Adam's sin, which was disobedience and then here is the connection here is the connection and this is where so through adam's headship all of us fall guilt imputed the sin is there it's credited to us we sinned as his representative he as a representative of all of us we receive his sin nature look at this description now who is adam Whatever else we see of Adam, we have to see him as, we have the sin of Adam here. We have to see him as a, the type of the coming one. Does everyone see that? He is a type. And so we talked about biblical theology. This is the anti-type. This is the type. This is the anti-type. Okay. Now look at this here. Watch this, okay? But not like the transgression, the free gift occurred in this way, okay? And so here we go. We have a comparison here, but it's a, a, a greater than. There's a greater than or dissimilarity, okay? So let's, let's diagram this really quick and then we'll, we'll see what, what, what we're talking about here, okay? So what I mean here is, so the, the sin of Adam, we have a, let's draw a diagram here. So you can, you can see here, positive righteousness, negative sin, right? Everyone's tracking with that, with that imagery. All right. And so with Adam, we're in a neutral place, right? We're at, this is, this is neutral. Okay. And so from Adam's from Adam's, he, he sins and brings all of humanity into a state of guilt and 
death. So everyone can see this. We're in, we're in a state of sin, guilt, and death, okay? But not like the transgression. Look at this. The free gift occurred in this manner. What is this manner here? Four, condition. If many, if, if many people died through their transgression of one man. So this is going to be, this is a conditional statement here. Many people died. So, so, so many people died. So if many people died through the transgression of one man. So, so again, look at this. They're not dying because of their own transgressions. Has everyone seen that here? So here, it doesn't say many people died because of all their transgressions, okay? So, so, so then this, this is the first proof that really solidifies our exegesis up there, okay? This is the, the means by which people die, okay? This is the action, people die, and, it's the, and, and this is the means, okay? So if we, if we took the interpretation above that because all sinned, then it should say, if many people died because of all their sins, how much more the grace of God? That's what it should say. But it doesn't say that. What it says here is that if many people died through the transgression of one man. So again, this is the, this is the imputation of guilt. Imputing of guilt. This is, or we could say, the, the, the representative. Or we could say the head. For if many people died through the transgression of Adam, through the representative, the failure of one man, right? How much more? So this is one of degree. This is one of degree. How much more? Now look at this. Watch this. Here we go. The free gift and the grace of God abounded for the many advantage of we could say advantage or we could even think about this as being the object so god's grace abounded in so let's let's write another word here increased excessive increase everyone tracking with that excessive increase and it's for many okay so now we're now we're flipping this we're we're uh Highlighting here, the grace of God, the free gift. Okay, so uh, <laughs> this is, this is uh, let's highlight some things here. This is uh, unmerited favor and a free gift, a gracious gift. So, so this is coming through Christ. There is no human effort here the grace of god his free gift abounded for the many okay but but who are the many here the many here the many here are sinners under the under the curse of death so look at this here so this, so this is the work of, of Adam. Look at the work of Christ. Okay, I'm going to use a different color here. So the starting point of God's grace, the starting point of God's grace is not at neutral. <laughs> it's in a state of sin. Uh, the many people, you can see where I'm going with this. The many people. That's a long way to go to get righteous. That's double the work of, right? So Adam's the, the, the distance that Adam went was this far, right? Look at how far God's grace. He's, he's not bringing neutral people into obedience. He's bringing sinners, condemned, guilty people all the way. <laughs> all the way, baby. This is where we're going with he, this. He's Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, God's grace of Christ's grace of God's grace took effect immediately when sin came into man. Yes. Yes, by faith. And so this is why it's so fundamental to see one, one gospel. I believe that Eve was a believer. 
I, I do believe we're going to see Adam. I believe Adam and Eve were believers. Cain was not. But God's grace took effect at the beginning. Henry, you get the gold star. You get the gold star. Every person that is in Christ receives the benefits. And it begins immediately. <laughs> even though the curse is there. Even though the curse is there. And this is why we need to see this covenant. We're going to read a couple more passages in the Westminster Confession of Faith. Again, we're not, uh, you're, you're not Presbyterian, but, but, but the text is good. The text is solid. This is why we have to see the gospel in the garden. We have to see Abel, Seth, Noah. They were saved through the work of Christ. Because they are in Christ. The, the God's grace and God's free gift abounded for them. We're going to get there, okay? Two heads, right? The head of Adam, the head of Christ. So when God stated about the curse, uh, when God said or mentioned the, the, the penalty of the sin of Adam, while, while he was still speaking about the curse, grace was also acting immediately. Immediately. Because he didn't kill them instantly, right? It's when you would when you broke, you would die. And he did not kill them. And he promised to send the offspring to undo the curse. So grace is there immediately. Certain question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, if if grace was given immediately, why was salvation was not available for anybody? Because Christ has to come in the fullness of time. <laughs> and the time was not full yet. <laughs> so there's there's various reasons for this. Paul talks about how sin has to increase. We have to see our absolute need. God promises through all these types, all these pictures. He's, he's showing, uh, Paul says that he binds everything up in sin. Uh, not that he's causing people to sin, but he's letting us go our way, but he's graciously acting to bring our salvation. And so ultimately your question, the question behind the question, Mark, is that it's, it's God's sovereignty. It's his hidden mystery. Why did he set it up this way? There's a mystery there. Working through time, we, can you imagine if he, he immediately judged and then immediately saved everyone? Where's the long, where, where, where do we see the long suffering of God? Where do we see the patience of God? We never see the patience of God. There are so many attributes of God. And this whole redemptive history is bringing, illuminating, not just his love. He, ra he raised Pharaoh up to, 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 to glorify his name so that his name would be proclaimed on all earth. Redemptive history includes the raising up of, of, of God as judge, the patience of God. He is a long suffering God. So there's, there's, there's such a bigger vision that's going on here, but it's a great question to ask because maybe we would have done it differently, but you and I, we're not all wise. And, so, and I would say the other reason, right off the bat, right? If he does it instantly, where is the faith? There is no faith, right? God wants to see our faith for the growing and maturing of us as his children, right? We're in, we're in, a, we're in the midst of a suffering. We're in the midst of persecution. We're in the midst of, of, of a problem. We want to remove instantly, but it's only through time that we mature. I think about, I love to work out. The only way to, to, to become in shape, whether you're running, whether you're lifting, whether you're doing whatever, is through long time of, of resistance and pain and suffering, right? Running a marathon, lots of suffering, right? But the end goal is amazing. And so God has ordained that our spiritual, let us run the race with endurance. <laughs> Looking to Jesus, the, the author, perfecter, of our faith. And so I, 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 uh, maybe that gets at answering your question, Mark. It's a great question. The, the technical biblical term is because it wasn't that it was not yet the fullness of time. <laughs> okay. Let's go on here. Cause I want to finish, but we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. So the grace of God and the free gift abounded for the, for the many people for, for many. And look at this through, through the grace specifically through the grace which is in one man, Jesus Christ. So highlighting here his humanity. Only a man 
can undo the curse. Now, obviously, Jesus is the God-man, but I'm saying from the perspective of this would be an explicit text where that would directly contradict someone who claimed that Jesus just appeared in, in the form of man but wasn't man. Uh, Adam is a man. Jesus is a man. And this is explicit in the text. By one man, Jesus Christ. Now, he's more than the man. He's the son of God. He's the God-man but he is a man. And so without him being a man, there is no redemption. There is no undoing of the curse. Okay. And it's God's grace that does this. So this is now the agent or the means. So coming back here to this picture here. Okay. So we have one sin. This leads to a state of guilt, death. We could talk about disobedience. Now we have the means of Jesus Christ, a gift from God, his grace, right? No one's earning. No one, so, so look at this. We're not just going, so the Catholic Church will say this. He, he removes all the past sin, all these different things, but we still have to be purified. And that's why there's purgatory, right? There's still this purification purpose, okay? But look at what Christ does here. Christ doesn't, Christ's work does not end at neutrality and then stop. It goes all the way to the right, righteous state, okay? So this is a, canceling of the sin debt right so there's that negative there's that negative removal of sin and then the positive state of righteous which we're going to see okay so there's 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 if you can imagine here there's two aspects there's two aspects to this everyone's tracking there with me the 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 canceling of our sin debt, of our guilt, and then the positive giving of righteousness. So, that, so now we're in a, a state of righteousness. So let's go on here. We're going to see this, okay? So look at this. The free gift is not like the result through the one who sinned. So again, we're, we're bringing, there is this highlighting of this, of this representative failure, okay? And it's not uh not comparable not in the in the sense we are comparing them because it's a greater than comparison a greater than comparison okay the so this is this guards against a one to one correlation okay adam is the type of christ but christ is so much more christ is so much more than what we lost in adam how is this going to be the case look at this here explanation for this is an explanation now okay on the one hand so look at this watch this from one source resulted in this is the result from one came condemnation so again this, this is coming back to the truth that through Adam, all of us are condemned. So again, this is concerning what Pastor Cloyd said. This is the imputation of guilt and punishment, okay? And this one is Adam. So this is so fundamental. And it's so fundamental to Christology. Look at this. And so this is where the two, the two are correlation from, okay? From the sin, um, from the sins of many, from the sins of many, the starting point is not Christ. The starting point is our sinfulness, our sins. From the sins of many resulted in justification, righteous state and judgment. Okay. So the starting point here is, look at this. I'm going to use black. Okay. 
sins of many sins of many that's the starting point and so that's going now to righteousness so that's why it's dissimilar does everyone see that it's not from neutral to righteous it's not from sin to neutral it's from unrighteousness the sins of many all the way baby all the way all the way to the top here we go if condition if through the transgression of one death ruled so look at this death ruled because of one again i'm telling you th there's this this represented this federal head through through the transgression of one i, I mean i don't see how how else we could be so clear through through the transgression of of one means because of one death ruled now watch this how much more now watch ones the ones who are the ones these are the ones who are receiving what are we receiving we are receiving the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness but is it just Jesus Christ who reigns? This is where action, actor, object is so fundamental. So look at this. Through the ones who are receiving will rule <laughs> in life means we rule with Christ. So it's the, it's the people the people who are ruling because that's what humanity was intended. All of us were to be ruling. So that's why Paul says later, if we suffer, we will reign with him. R R uh, Romans eight, if we suffer, we will reign with Jesus Christ. And so it's so much more than just the one it's so much more. And then if ever there was doubt, let's look at some word, some words here. So look at this, the free gift of righteousness. So righteousness here is a state of conformity to the law. And the law is love God, love others, right? That's the summary of the law, right? Love God and love others. So this is, this is positive. So there are people out in the, in, we won't mention names, but there are people out in, 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 in circles, you know, within the Catholic church, within Catholic church theology concerning other scholars that they'll just say, Oh, Christ, Christ atoned for our sins, but that's it. They ignore the gift of righteousness. And here explicitly, it's the gift of a righteous state. It's positive. So this is the, the righteousness that Christ earned for us. And so this is the gospel. We are, and so this whole idea though, so look at this here. This whole idea though is union with Christ. Union with Christ. And he is our federal head. He, he earned for us righteousness. It's a free gift. It's God's unmerited grace and favor. And so when we look at Christology, fundamental aspects of who Christ is, he is not only the, the final word, God's final revelation, the God man, our prophet, priest, and king, our mediator. He is not only the eternal word, the, the creator of the world, the life sustainer, the, the light, the true light. He is also our federal head. He's the means uh, by which we are brought into right relationship with God. And we're going to unpack this more as we talk about the atonement. But here, when, when we read Genesis 1, 2, and 3, you cannot read it without considering the promise of Christ. As Henry said, in Genesis 3, in Genesis 2, 
thinking about what is going to unfold, okay? Now, in a technical sense, the promise is not given until after the fall in time and space. Fair enough. But as we read through Genesis 1 and 2, there are so many types that are pointing to even in, in, in the calling of, 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 of man, right, to be the image of God. Paul is saying now Christ is the true image, right? The, invisible, the image of the invisible God, right? Of Adam was to care and to guard. Christ guards, right? He squashes the head of the serpent. So here tonight, as we look at the, 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 the sin and fall of Adam, we have to recognize fundamentally, Adam was our federal head by which all of us received the guilt. We all received the human nature. And he's pointing towards Christ, who is also our federal head, in whom we also receive righteousness and grace and love. Um, 